What up, it's Snowflake, yeah, and this is uh, tutorial number three of my DVD Studio Pro series, okay, and I'm going to show you how to make the main menu of your DVD, and we're going to do it in Photoshop Elements, that's right, Photoshop Elements, you can do it there, so that's what we're going to do, okay, so uh, the reason why we're going to do it there, I'm going to explain to you, and that's because Photoshop Elements is a graphics program. Did you know that? Well, in case you didn't, now you do. But compared to DVD Studio Pro, which is not a graphics program, this is the way to go. DVD Studio Pro has options of adding text and, and pictures and all that sort of stuff, but it's not a graphics program. And so when you start adding text and things that it's not really built to do, they don't look that great. They're kind of pixelated and, and, and it's just, it's not as high quality as you can make it. And so what I do is I create the DVD menus in Photoshop Elements, save them, as a PNG file and then import them into DVD Studio Pro and it works out great. So I'm gonna show you how we do that. Now, here's the DVD menu I have. It's pink, very, very pink, uh, and but it's also very, very simple. It's got two buttons, it's got the disc number and the title and that's it. Uh, and I like to keep things very simple. You of course can do whatever you'd like but I'm gonna show you how I made this one and uh, how I'm going to get it ready for DVD Studio Pro. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna hit image and I'm gonna go to resize and I'm gonna hit image size. And I'm going to show you the dimensions. The dimensions are 854 by 480. And that's because I'm creating a DVD menu that is 16.9. Okay? So it's widescreen. And that way, when you pop it into a DVD player that has a TV that is 16.9 or a widescreen, it takes up the full screen as opposed to just a box. So this is doing this by choice. Okay? So 854 by 480. This is the image size. All right? And that's the pixels. Now, the other thing I just want to bring your attention to because this will come in, uh, later in the tutorial, but just make sure that this is uh, constrained proportions, is deselected, and this is selected, and I will show you why later. Hit OK, cool. Now, I'm gonna go and select new, blank file, and I'm gonna call this Roommates DVD. All right, and the width is 854, height is 480, resolution is 300, I have it set to RGB color, and background contents are white. This is how I have it set up. Hit OK. Now, let's get to my new file and I'm bring it up here, okay? And that's my background. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create that little box in the center. So I'm gonna keep, uh, select my rectangle tool. Boom! Drag it in the middle. Now, it automatically added a drop shadow and I don't know why it keeps doing that, but it does. I'm gonna deselect it for now. Eventually I will add one though. Uh, I'm gonna select my arrow tool and I'm gonna just I'm gonna kind of keep it within what I believe to be the title safe. I don't have the actual guidelines turned on, but I, you know, have done this so many times that I, I know it's around this area, okay? So keep it within the title safe, and that way if it's on an older television, it, you know, you can see everything. But I'm gonna hit the green check mark, that looks about good, and I'm gonna double click on, double click on the shape and just change the color to black for now so you can just see it, but I'm eventually gonna turn it to pink, okay? Now the way I'm going to turn to pink is first I'm going to create another rectangle. What? Right over the top of everything else. And that covers everything. Cool. That's great. Well, I'm going to show you why I did that, okay? So that covers everything. All I wanted is in that little center box. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually color this box. So we're going to select the gradient tool, which is over here, okay? And up here, I can do edit. And edit allows me to change the colors. Now there's some presets, but all I do is I would change the colors by double clicking on these little boxes and changing it to what you'd like. This is the color I want, so I'm gonna just hit okay, but you can mess around with that uh, for the gradient, okay? Now, uh, before I do this, it's gonna ask me to simplify the shape. And I have that shape, the overlay, the, the bigger one is the one that we're gonna do this to. This shape layer must be simplified before proceeding. It will no longer have a vector mask. Simplify the shape. Hit OK. Now, I'm going to drag across the shape and you will see the gradient. Right now, if you did it like a little shorter line, it's actually gonna be more defined, uh, like where that, like basically the width of that gradient. But if you do it a little bit longer, up here and down here, you can see that it's a little bit more gradient-y, right? And depending on how you do it, you can get more pink, more black, whatever you like. But that looks good to me. So now what I'm going to do with that shape over the top of the inner box here, see that? 
I'm gonna hit option in between these two, and that's gonna put this like little inlet here. And what that did was this. Oh man, it's magic. And I'll just show you that. By doing that, it puts it just in that little center box. Okay, cool. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select that inner box and I'm going to give it a, uh, a stroke around the edges. And in my effects tab, you can see I have it selected on strokes. This box is highlighted and then this is says strokes. I'm gonna double click this and what that did is that puts a, a edge around the outer, outer edges of that box. That line's way too thick. So I'm gonna go over here and click the FX tab or the FX button and uh, change this size to four. That looks much better. Okay, cool. Now I'm gonna add that uh, white bar that went across the center or the kind of lower, um, lower third of it. I'm gonna select my rectangular tool again, and I'm gonna just create that tool by clicking and dragging about the size that I want the boxes like that. And it actually already did it, but I'm gonna drag it up here and show you what it looks like. When you create it, it probably will look like this, okay? And it also already added the strokes, so, uh, but I'm gonna change that to three, all right, for that inner box is three, and I'm gonna change the color of this to white, and you can see that it's over the top of everything. I'm gonna get it right in the area that I want it, which is right about here. And then I'm gonna do the same thing, only I'm gonna do it with this pink layer. I'm gonna hit option in between these two and it's gonna put it, it's gonna push it in and it's gonna make it so it's just visible within this little inner box, okay? And I'm also gonna give that a drop shadow. Uh, I'm gonna give both those boxes a drop shadow up in my effects tab. You change this to drop shadows and if you double select this one, it gives it a nice drop shadow. And you do this one, actually the shape one, the, that box, double click that, it gives it a nice drop shadow. And if you wanted to mess with that, you go in here and click the FX button and uh, in the drop shadow area, change the size and this and so opacity. But I'm not gonna do it for those two. Okay, gonna hit okay. Now, I'm gonna go to my text tool. Okay, that little big T, little big, that doesn't make sense. The T and I'm gonna select right there, and I'm gonna type the word room mates, and it's invisible. That's what I want, I want it to be invisible, not really. It put it in again, and I'm gonna drag it to the top, and I don't want it like that, I'm gonna do it like this, okay? And uh, I'm gonna change the size, I'm gonna double click it, change the size to 32, which is nice and big, <sighs> but I want the color to be black. So I'm gonna double click it, select the color box up there, change it to black. Okay, and I'm gonna give it a stroke over in the effects tab, strokes, and I'm gonna give it a stroke. <clears throat> stroke, <laughs> stroke, yeah. Okay, I'm losing my mind. Strokes, uh, but we're gonna change the size to three, and I'm gonna change the color to white. Okay, and that's just what the kind of roommate's logo looks like. All right. Uh, I actually think I'm gonna change it so it's not bold, because right now it's bold. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that looks better. Okay, cool. So, Roommates, uh, that's our title. I'm gonna give that a drop shadow by going to the Effects tab again, back to Drop Shadows, double click the drop shadow, bam! That looks great to me. And, but the one thing I'm gonna change is I'm gonna move this up just a little bit. Hang the arrow keys. Okay, cool. Now I'm gonna add some text, some more text, yo. So I'm gonna go to my text, my T again, and I'm gonna select in the box, and I'm gonna type play all, and it's also invisible, so I'm gonna drag it to the top, because it's not at the top, that's why I can't see it. All right, this one, I am gonna change the font to bold, and I'm also gonna make it much smaller. I'm gonna make it 10, a 10, a 10, and I'm gonna change it to bold, all right, and I'm gonna give it a drop shadow, but I'm gonna change the effects of this drop shadow to five, five, and I'm gonna make the opacity 50. Okay. Then I'm gonna go over here in my layers uh, area, I'm gonna right click on that and I'm gonna duplicate the layer. And I'm gonna, it's gonna give you the option to change the name and I'm gonna call it um, chapters because that's gonna be our chapters button. I'm gonna hit okay. It's created that. I'm gonna drag it over there, just it creates it right over the top of the other one. 
I'm gonna double click it and type chapters. Okay, now I've got my two different buttons. Now you can see they're all wonky, funky looking, right? They're not like lined up. So what we're gonna do is this with this one selected, I'm gonna hit shift and select this one. And up here you can see it's a line. I'm gonna do align to the bottom edges. And what it does is it, is it pushes them down so they're aligned. Okay, and I'll, I'll undo that so you can see what that looks like. Align bottom edges. And you can do the vertical edges or the top edges. It just does it based on that center or the bottom or the top, okay? And I'm gonna take both of those and I'm gonna kind of move them over here. And I, I center stuff up kind of by eye. It's suggested to use grids and stuff like that because then, you know, you're gonna be more exact about it, but I just kind of do it by eye. All right, last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a disk number. So text again, actually, uh, you know what, let's just duplicate the chapters. And we'll call it disk one. And I'm gonna drag it down here, I'll type disk one, and I'm gonna highlight it and change by hitting shift and up, basically selected everything beyond or from the one edge to the other. Uh, I'm gonna select the white, okay? And I already got the drop shadow, and we're good to go. And look at that, I got myself a menu, a DVD menu, a main DVD menu. Cool, now I'm gonna save it. All right, so this is what we're gonna do. First, I'm gonna hit save, and I should have saved it a long time ago, but I didn't. Uh, the Photoshop file, so it's roommate DVD, PSD, the format's PSD, I'm gonna hit save, and I selected before which folder I wanted to save it to. Now what I'm going to do is we're going to squash it. And the reason why we're going to squash it is pixels are different between video and graphics. And so I want that 16.9 menu, um, but I want it to look good on my DVD. And this I have found is the best way to make, to make it look best in that 16.9 format. You are creating the image on 16.9, but when you bring it into uh, DVD Studio Pro, you're actually going to bring it in just as a standard depth 720 by 480. And DVD Studio Pro will stretch it back out to make it look right. Okay, but this is this is what we're gonna do in Photoshop. So I'm gonna select all my layers by clicking the top one and hit shift and select both all of them. And I'm gonna uh, right click on it and select merge layers. Now don't save it like this because if you save it like this, you won't be able to go back and make any changes to the DVD, DVD menu. Now it's just one image. It just pushed everything to one image, right? So I'm just doing this temporarily, okay? Now uh, with all of them compressed, I'm gonna go up here and go to image and resize and image size. And this is what I was telling you before, you wanna make sure that this is deselected, constrained proportions, and that the resample image is checked. Okay, and I have this by cubic, that's just how it was default. And I'm gonna change the width to 720. And that's just, uh, those. that's the standard uh, dimensions for a DVD menu, or for, for standard definition, is 720 by 480. We're gonna hit okay, and it's gonna squash everything. It looks squashed, but don't worry, when we get in DVD Studio Pro, it's gonna look great, okay? Um, now that that's all like that, I'm gonna hit Command, Shift, S, and that's Save As. And the reason I'm doing Save As is I don't wanna save the Photoshop file, I wanna save it as a PNG, okay? As a PNG, I'm gonna hit Save. Um, I'm not gonna do any interlacing, so it's none. I'm gonna hit OK, and it saves that uh, image. Now I'm gonna hit Command, Z, Command, Z, and I have all my other layers. I will save it so that uh, it saves the Photoshop file at, with all the layers, because I want those layers in there, so if I want to go back and make changes, I can. And that's it. Now you've got your Photoshop file and your file, your PNG file, it's ready for DVD Studio Pro, and that's the main menu, okay? In the next tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to do the chapters menu, and we're just gonna make some little revisions to this menu, just duplicate it, okay? But uh, this, this is the main menu, the next one's gonna be chapters. Uh, if this was helpful, you know, you should like the video, because that'd be cool. And then, uh, you know, maybe comment, you know, let me know how well it's going, or if you have any questions, you know, you can always ask me. And then subscribe, up at the top, there's gonna be a button, it's like red or something, and it's gonna say subscribe. You should click it and subscribe to my YouTube channel, okay? Then check back later for more tutorials and tips on Final Cut Pro, Apple Motion, Compressor, DVD Studio Pro, and the rest of the uh, tutorials in this series for DVD Studio, Pro, what is up? Check back later, huh?